Hi everyone, your favorite Sensotech Jedi Lisi here with an overview and introduction to our safeguarding feature. I am going to be showcasing today what our safeguarding in the Senso portal looks like and also what our Microsoft Teams chat safeguarding feature looks like. It's a very exciting video. All right, if you are a regular fan of these, which I hope you are, you're going to notice I'm on the other side of the monitor and that's for a good reason. You don't want my big ugly mug in the way of what I'm going to be showing you today. So you'll You'll see why I'm on the other side. So let's go ahead and let's just jump right into this. So right here in this main portal, you'll see I have this neat little violation bell here. And this is showing me that there has been a violation on this device. So if I click on that bell, it's going to let me know that on this device I have a violation. There's that violation and it has fallen into these categories and I can mark it as actioned so that the bell will go away or the bell will actually disappear itself after a little while. But let's talk about the full logging information. You can get to that from two different areas right here in the module toolbar where you can click on logging or you can go to the admin center and you can click on the logging here to the left. It's going to take you right down into the logging dashboard. At the top you can pick the site if you are a large school district or even if you're kind of small to medium size. You may have a lot of sites. Its organization is key. If you you just want to pinpoint information for that day, you can be very selective and pick just what site you want to look at. Also, you're looking at today's date. Now, I will say for today, I'm going to stay within today's date because if you look at my word cloud, I have created a detection library. I've created my own library of what I would call PG words. I didn't want to have anything very offensive in there, especially when it comes to the words. There can be some really bad ones that are going to show up here or any offensive images because I wanted to keep it safe for everyone that are going to be watching these video series. Now, just use your imagination. <laughs> In a typical setup, most of the words that are going to be over there are going to be not as PG as they are right now. So, of course, you can sort through that date range, even do a custom one. You have this information up here of how many violations you have for whatever date range you've selected, unique keywords, unique users, and unique devices. In the word cloud, the more times that the word has been typed in for whatever date range you've selected, the bigger the word will be. If you leave it right here, again, it's just for that date that we're looking at for today. You have our keyword count, top 10 violations top 10 violating users and top 10 violating devices and the libraries that they're coming out of. Now I will say that we have pre-built libraries in there that cover the gambit. Everything from uh, extremism to child exploitation, cyberbullying, self-harm, suicide, you name it. Those libraries are already pre-built into the software for those keywords. This one I have made my own library. So you do have that option right here. You can actually come in and manage your own own libraries of information of keywords and you can even import your own libraries pretty handy function to have. All right, so there are two ways that we can go ahead and look at one of these violations. I can click on this word right here and that's actually going to take me over and create a filter and filter it down and just show me these words that I clicked on, help. Or if I want to look at another one, same thing, I come back here. If I go back to violation logs and I click clear filters or if I have not clicked on any words right here in the word cloud and I went over to violation logs, it's going to show me a list of all the violations again from the date range I have selected. Remember, you will need to change the date range for whatever you want to looking at so that you can see it here in this list. So I'm looking at today's violations. I have this really great series column of data from screenshots um, down all the way here, all these screenshots, and I'm going to introduce all of this columns of data of what they do. So let's just start with a screenshot. I'm going to go ahead and click on one of these. You'll see there is a violation that occurred. It gets that nice little arrow there of where the violation is and a lot of great context around when the violation was uh, collected, the device, the date stamp, the phrase, etc. You can see everything right here in that screenshot. Now for auditing purpose, this is really great for school districts. You can change the status of it, write a note against it, save those changes and even email print to send it to whomever needs to see these violations. Now right across here, you also have some other tools. You can sort the columns of information that come 
come off of these violations so you can just see what you need to see in this information below it. You can also go ahead and click edit and that's going to take you right into where that status information is I showed you in the image itself. Um, you can go ahead and export to a CSV. You can print out your violations right here. This is to refresh it because maybe you've put in a search function which I'm going to show you how to use in just a moment and also you've seen me use clear filters. So let me introduce you across here to some of the columns of data. So you see we have screenshot, date, site, device, and user. I'm going to scroll down because I want to scroll over and show you these other columns of data up here. We have columns of data that are the phrase itself, the severity level, status. Uh, I'm going to talk about image analysis in just a moment. Action, you know, this is the action that was taken against that uh, the, the, the violation, excuse me, the context of it, and the phrase itself. It was typed in a sentence. You're going to be able to get that sentence information here, again, to get a really good idea of context around when that violation occurred, and the library application and window title. So those are all the columns of data that you can sort through, leave if you want to look at everything there, or remember I said up there at the top, you can go ahead and sort these columns out. Now, also, cool feature, check this out. You click on the little dictionary and it's going to give you the definition of the keyword. I got to tell you, there are, I work with so many schools. There are acronyms and things and words I didn't even, wow, there's a lot of them. So it's nice to know that you can simply click on that little dictionary icon there and it's going to tell you what that keyword means. All right, so going back up, you see we got a lot of screenshots here from the different devices and and let's talk about filters. Now, we are collecting so much data for you. Data is king. This is amazing. You're going to know all the uh, violations that are happening on your devices. However, that's a lot of data to get through. So we make it very, very easy for you. So you can use these search bars to find the specific device that you want. You can come over here and you can type in a specific user that you want. You see all of these columns have that ability where you can search through this information. Again, I'm going to clear filters. Now, you can also simply, boom, click on one of those in the column itself, and it's going to sort and show me just Nelson's. What has Nelson done on any device that this user has logged into? Clear filters, maybe I want to see everything that's happened on US Office PC2. Again, just click on that, and now it's going to go ahead and filter that data. Now, this right here is very important. It says critical. Any of the violations that come into the severity of urgent or critical, you can actually set up so users, uh, these are portal users, users can get email alerts. Safety officers, counselors, administrators, whomever needs to see that, it's very easy within Senso to set up an email alert. I'm going to show you what an email alert will look like when it gets sent to you, there you go. There's the phrase and it gives you some information of that email alert and so you can go to it and check it out. Also. I did say I was going to come back and talk about image analysis. So let me go back to that category there, right there. You see how it says clear? Now, this is AI software that actually analyzes the images, the screenshots themselves, and gives you some idea of, okay, there's something in there that you might need to look at. So it wouldn't say green, it would be red. And also this would change up here and say there are visual threats and you can click on that hyperlink and it will actually create a filter for you and it will take you straight to those images that you need to check out. So this is a very neat feature to have. Not only are you getting those keyword violations, you're also getting image analysis as well. Okay, so that is an overview of violation logs. You can also get application logs right here. I really haven't opened very many applications, so there's not going to be anything show up here. Website logs, again, ton of information and in website logs on here. So utilize these filters so that it's easy for you to get through. If you're just looking at that one device, go ahead and click on that and you can get an idea of everything that that device or everywhere that has gone as far as website logs. And because we collect so much data, we do archive the logs after a certain point so that you don't have thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of information to go through. We keep it nice and uh, crisp so that you can load it very quickly. But if you need to go retroactively back and look for a violation, right there, there you go. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about what it looks like for the Teams side of it, Microsoft Teams logging. Now these, I wanted, I, I debated on this one. I, I'm just gonna have, uh, you know, what a normal environment would look like, but I've blurred it out. 
for safety reasons. <laughs> so you see here again in the Microsoft Teams logs that you have um, the date, you can see the site, there's the phrase and images right there. You get the severity level, but here you also get a percentage of what category it's coming out of. You see we have one that's from gore, we have one from drugs, and even uh, different, there's going to be a lot of different categories within here that it's going to give you a percentage of from the image that it's going to let you know where that image is from. And these, Alex and Chris have been very naughty boys on here. They've been talking about something pretty bad. And so you can also get chat transcripts from Microsoft Teams chat. How awesome is that to go ahead and safeguard Microsoft Teams chat for your school. So you get, again, get a really good context around when the violations occur um, right there in your Senso portal. Now, also, the great thing about Microsoft Teams logging is it can be a standalone feature. You don't have to have the Senso portal, which you should have Senso, but for some of our customers, they're really just wanting to make sure that that Microsoft Teams chat has been safeguarded. Don't worry, it is a standalone product that you can get from the Microsoft Store and put into Teams, and then you can actually get that really cool page I just showed you of all of those keywords and chat transcripts right into Teams. All right, guys, well, that was a lot of information to go over. I hope that you hung in there with me the whole time, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.